Nigeria and all these places, seems the authorities and police like to stop me and pull out machine guns and rifles on me. I just told them my two stories. My wife's been on the machine gun with me twice too. And you, you, you got to know the angels and God and, and are with you when you're in these places on the back roads. And so uh, here we go. We get pulled for 1030 at night by some officer for no reason. And I told the apostle, I said, here we go again. I said, this feels like Nigeria. He said, no, 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 man. It's not Nigeria. I said, I'm telling you, I got the same feeling. And the guy comes and says, sir, can I get your license and stuff? And he said, yes. He said, what is your name? The apostle tells his name. And uh, he says, uh, what are you doing? He tells him, he said, why are your vehicle like this? Why are your windows tinted? He said, because it's a new vehicle, a gang tenant. What's back there? You got a baby back there? Why you got tents on the place where you got a baby at? We're like, what? And then he said, get out of the car, sir. I said, here we go. He started getting aggressive, hostile, harassing him about everything, the plates, the everything, just getting any answer he gave. My friend's been very polite for now. Any answer he gave, the guy's just, you could see he has demonic spirit. And so we began to pray, him, his wife and I are in the car, and I'm like, shut up, blah, 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 you know, we're praying. But then when he turned to the side, he was getting more aggressive and loud. I saw the Beretta. Now on his side, we started, Lord, we loose right now. You know, we started getting off the start of Pentecostal. I went from the Baptist prayers to my Pentecostalism. And I said, Lord, right now, release divine intervention. Out of nowhere, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, another police officer walks up, walks to the front of the car. Because my friends over here, who's an apostle, the police officer. Out of nowhere. Not the police officer, just came out of nowhere. He said, Why are you harassing them? These men are priests. They're men of God. They're pastors. You should be getting prayer for them and you should leave them alone. And he walked beside the car. And I, I thought he was going to go around and walk to where they at. And I looked, me and his wife just summed up. I said, How did he know that we were. How did, we didn't, it's no, I'm thinking like, you know, in America, a lot of pastors got on their church, got on their vehicle, uh, uh, Mount Oliver Baptist, uh, uh, full gospel church sticker, and they got on the, the license plate, first lady, or second lady, some church. They, oh, you missed that. But anyway, they got on their license plate, master prophet, chief bishop, a Masonic symbol, and you, you can guess they might be a pastor. In the Baptist, you know, you know, and I said, we don't have nothing. It's a brand, it's no symbols, no sign. We didn't talk about church. First of all, he came from nowhere. Secondly, it's dark in his tinted windows. He can't even he can't even see the prophetic to look in the vehicle to prophesy when he's singing in the car because we tinted windows at night. And immediately that man just just stopped arguing and said, you know what? Just go, just go, just do what you want. You've been doing what you want to do anyway. <laughs> so my friend gets back in the car. He said, the man said, just go. You've been doing what you do anyway. He says, like the demons was telling me, like, we've been trying to get you, but you've been doing what you want to do anyway. We can't stop him. And we said, yeah, because the other officer came and told him this and said, let him go. He said, what officer? We said, the officer that stood by you and them and yelled at him. He said, I didn't see nobody. We said, we said you didn't hear the guy standing by you and him yelling? He said, no. And, he and we told him, and I said, I'm so glad your wife is in the car. And she's so glad I'm in the car because we would think we were losing our Holy Ghost mental. And we, we both saw him just where we both heard him say these things, the man of God, these guys are free. And we both saw him just vanish by the side of the window. I'm gonna put it on Facebook, and if I'm lying, they'll call me out. But see, it was an angelic visitation in the service, it was an angelic visitation at dinner, and then it was an angelic visitation to protect us. Because a lot of times when the Lord is accelerating his plans and accelerating his purpose and moving in a hiding dimension, those the spiritual realm is like reverberations go out and the enemy is notified and tries to stir something up. So the Lord releases these angelic reinforcements to place back the hand of the enemy. Because when Moses was being born to deliver a nation, all of a sudden there's a decree to kill all the kids. When Jesus was being born to deliver a nation, all of a sudden there's the demonic decree to kill all the kids. When Jesus shows up on the beach, all of a sudden, a man who doesn't even hang on the beach, who hangs in the graves, in the tombs, and in the mountains, the beach was not his area. But the vibration of Jesus in the spirit realm. 
See, one thing, you don't have to be louder in the spirit realm. The, the vibration of God, the presence of God that went, those demonic strongmen, principality, chief demons, even though he was in the tombs in the mountains somewhere, something hit them and they said, gotta go find out what's happening. And they made their way to the beach. So what I was saying is this, that angels are real, real, and God will help you to discern them. And the more yielded you get to the Holy Spirit, the more yielded you get to God, the more these things will become even the more real and frequent and evident in your life. And they're for the mature. Amen? Okay. Okay. Amen. Let's get into this. Shh. Ah. What can I say to 